we, let's get a bit more. And to our surprise, even that ran out, you know, so we had to order two, uh, a couple of thousand more now. So, yeah, no complaints at all here. That's uh, that's really good, though. I'm, I'm actually, re- I'm, actually re- I'm really proud of you. I'm really proud of you try- getting your uh, getting your newest album out. So really thanks, man. You. Thanks. OK, so uh, let's start this interview. I know that it's really early in the morning for me. Uh, but any, yeah. for, okay, so I'm gonna do the a little bit of introduction right here. So for anyone that's tuning in right now to my show on CJ Low, uh, uh, 1690 AM, turn on the darkness. We have Arjun Anthony Lucassen, the legend himself of Arion. Hi, Phil. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we are gonna start off a few interview questions that we've got lined up right now. So sure. C- uh, congratulations on finally completing the source um i know that the last album that you did was a uh the gentle storm how was it like coming towards from the gentle storm because i know that this out al- that album was more like a romantic album and this one is more right. a sci-fi uh oriented album how is it like transitioning from more romantic story to a more sci-fi album Oh, I need that. You know, every album I do is always a complete contrast to the album before. And like you said, The Gentle Storm was a was a romantic album. It was a love story. It was a very feminine album, you know, of course, with all like a thing. And after that, Hold I was on. like, damn it, you know, and I need some more balls this time. And I need, like, to go back to the sci-fi and do something completely different. Yeah, I love contrast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, I was just actually listening to the Gentle Storm the other day, and it's just like I noticed there there were some elements too that was uh, borrowed from the Gentle Storm into the source, which I noticed that one of the tracks, uh, one of the tracks, I think it was uh, Star of Sira, the introduction. I think uh, I'm not too sure because there was like a there was like a melody that was uh, very familiar. Okay. Okay. So that's well, what... it's 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 not uh, deliberate, but you know, <laughs> I did I did about fifty, sixty albums now, so I'm sure, and I'm getting kind of old, so I'm sure I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm at that age where I start repeating myself, it's even without good. without wanting to do it. But but yeah, I can always say it's deliberate, you know. <laughs> it's all good though. It's all good. Um. So why a prequel to zero one zero one one zero zero one? Uh, was this an album that you had in mind when you're uh, uh, beginning to beginning to write the uh, story for it. Not at all. No, no. no. It's, it's basically not the way I work. I, um, I, I basically I do not plan. I just start, you know, working on on a little idea, and I at that point I have no idea what kind of project it's going to be. In fact, this album I thought it was going to be a solo album, but then it got pretty heavy, and I thought, no, no, it's too heavy for a solo album. I can't sing heavy, so maybe it's going to be a star one. And then all these folky parts came in, you know, with the flute and the violin and the cello. And I thought, no, no, it's not Star One either. You know, it looks like it's going to be an Arion. So then slowly it was forming into an Arion. And uh, at some point I got inspired by artwork, actually. It was the other way around. Usually I first finish the album and then I look for artwork. But this time I googled sci-fi artist on Google Images. And uh, I found a lot of artists and I came across this guy called Jan Suetre. Mm-hmm. And and his work was like perfect for my music. It was very detailed and dark and industrial. And I saw this image of this uh, girl underwater with all the tubes attached. And uh, at some yeah, that image just brought me back to the whole Planet Y story and made me create a prequel. Mm-hmm. Which is very interesting because I like I've noticed like it focuses more like on how before planet uh, before planet y came to its uttermost destruction in zero one right yes yeah yeah so that it was kind of cool to see like you know how everything uh, played out and how um what is it called um just just it, it was just cool to see how it was just played out and just showing what was beforehand of what life great was. yeah 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 it's basically you know it's it's called the source. It's basically about the source of mankind, about the source of the forever race, and it, it explains a lot of uh, things actually. Yeah. Uh, so, how was it like to work this time with different musicians for this uh, album this time around uh, for the source? Did you uh, did you ask many vocalists, or and uh, what did you do first uh, to contact them, and who did you have in mind? Um, as in uh, for singers when you first wanted to like record this album 
Uh, well, when I when I start working on L, I have no idea. Like I told you, I don't even know what project is going to be. So I have no idea about the singers. Really, I start singers thinking about the singers once I have uh, a lot of the music finished and once I have an idea for the story. Because obviously, the singers I choose will have to fit the music and they will have to fit the story. So at that point, I just go to my wish list, which is about a hundred singers, <laughs> and uh, yeah, really, really, and. Um, I pick out those singers that I think would be perfect for this and I uh, contact them and uh, they can't all do it, you know. Some might be too busy or might be touring or might be uh, whatever, you know. So, uh, But luckily now I, I got all my favorite singers. I mean, I mean, this is my best cast ever, really. Because mm -hmm. I remember, like, I think uh, in, a new, uh, in a video you said that, you know, that Tommy and uh, James Labrie could not make it because I think, they were, were, they, uh, were they touring at the, at the time? Well, they couldn't come to my studio, so that was a shame. Usually, I fly all the singers to my studio. You know, mm -hmm. that's the way I prefer to work, because because magic always happens in a studio, and and there's always a kind of a chemistry going. But uh, yeah, these guys were just too busy, so they had to do it in their own studios, or they had to uh, uh, like do it in a studio close to them. Mm -hmm. um, I also do have to say, Michael Mills, keep him, because honestly, he. Like, every single time when I listen to the album, he always shines, and it always makes me smile, because his high high pitches, when he does the screams, is just absolute, absolutely phenomenal. Mike is totally amazing. I, I discovered him on YouTube, and ever since then, I've been a huge fan of him, and you know, I, I used him for my previous album, The Theory of Everything. He had a big part there. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really plan him for this album, but I needed, uh, like, I need, need a little harmony somewhere. And he sent me this whole symphony of voices, you know, and I was like, oh my God, I love this so much. Could you do this all over the album? And then I really started looking for, for spaces for him to, to do shit because it's so cool, you know? Mm hmm. Um, what I also noticed that in the album too is that he plays an important role of in the story uh, of in the source uh, as the character th1 as well as Tommy Rogers as the uh, chemist so why is it that they have more of a presence in the story you may ask you think more of a presence than other characters yeah that's why I've noticed in the in the story they have a lot more of a presence like I noticed like half of the album they do uh well, I, it's, I think it's just a feeling you have, because when I divide the singers over the album, especially this time, I made sure that they had equally, uh, the equal lines to sing. So they all uh, perform in about nine or ten songs. I think there are a few who have a few more songs, like Michael Erickson and Florian Jansen. I think they have 11 or 12 songs. But basically, it's um, they have about the same amount of, uh, of lines to sing. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, so maybe it's just because you like them so much that you have <laughs> feel that they're... <laughs> yeah, it could, no, it could be, you know? It could be the reason. Well, yeah, because, like, I noticed um, James Abri, he, he does, like, more of the, more the narration in a way. That's why I've noticed on this album, too. True, yeah, that's true, yeah. He is a historian and he tells the story, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so the aquatic race was always mentioned in Zero One. Uh, why is it... Uh, why is it that you wanted to focus more now on the, the aquatic race in the source? Well, this is the transition they make from their their home planet Alpha to the planet Y, where which is a water planet, you know, because the air is toxic there mm -hmm. because of the sun, Sierra. And they have to live. They have to adjust to to life underwater. And indeed, this is this is where the chemist comes in, you know, because he has uh, devised this this um, liquid eternity, which allows people to live underwater. So yeah, it's it's all about the transition they have to make on this new planet. Okay. Okay. And of course, they have to turn from from uh, from just uh, uh, they have to turn into an aquatic race. Hmm. I see. That's that's pretty cool, actually. How that that is, really. Thank you. It Thank is. You. It is really unique. Um, so I noticed that there's a heavy, heavy influence on sci-fi elements this time around. 
Um, so what kind of source of material did you look into uh, to get more influence from? Did you get influence from uh, Star Trek, Doctor Who, um, as well as maybe other uh, other things as well? It all started with Star Trek for me. You know, I was I was a little kid. I was like ten years old and watching TV, and suddenly Star Trek came for the first time. You know, the old series with with Kirk and Spock, and I was mesmerized. You know, I saw this weird guy with the pointy ears and this on this weird red planet with with blue women or green women and way way weird orange skies and i loved it so much it's the first time i saw it and ever since then i've been hooked on on sci-fi and indeed like you mentioned you know doctor who as well and a lot of movies okay uh what other what other movies would you say that that's like also heavily influenced well it all started with 2001 which was 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 uh, the Kubrick movie, uh, and uh, yeah, stuff like Stargate. I love uh, of all the old movies. Uh, Blade Runner is fantastic. Uh, Alien, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. Okay, yeah, like I I realize like I I use, I like watch those movies too. Like Aliens, like really really good. Like I watched more of the newer Alien because uh yeah yeah that's some, like the more recent but i i still have yet to check that out the uh old a- alien out because uh it just looks really good and really really scary too um yeah yeah well the first alien is fantastic <laughs> I-, I love that one yeah <laughs> check it out i, I hope it aged well i never know of course uh, like i i really i really want to enjoy it so i'll definitely i'll definitely look at that um cool so i noticed that there's a lot of industrial elements on zero one, uh, what made you shift to more of this album in terms of more melodic melodies, heavier grooves, and catchy choruses such as uh, uh, catchy choruses such as uh, I noticed in there in the songs uh, everybody dies and run apocalypse run, which was right. uh, it, it just like there's still more of a spark of like right yes, of yeah. uh, more catchiness and more grooves. So like, what made you um, what made you more uh, influenced or more melodic grooves and heavier grooves? It's a reaction to the previous Aryan album. Uh, the previous Aryan album was Theory of Everything, and it was my prog album. You know, it was a very difficult album. It had uh, it had f- four like twenty two minute songs, and it, they had no structure. There were no choruses. Um, I just went into the studio with that album and just started writing and just started recording and out came this big monster you know which is which is cool if you hear it a couple of times but at at first listen you probably go like what's happening here you know it was not a catchy album it was not an easy album and again like i said in the beginning you know i want uh, every album i do is a contrast to the one before i wanted this album to be more catchy and indeed you know everybody dies is clear uh, run apocalypse runs a clear chorus and uh, yeah well, i wanted to, a bit, bit more catchy stuff i wanted to make a bit more uh, accessible album and more more structured mm-hmm. exactly because I, I also noticed in everybody eyes too that there's like that little uh, electronic dance music part in the little half and there's just like i noticed that there was also like a little bit of muse in there i don't know if you like uh, i don't know if you were listening to muse at the time because that chorus was very muse like I, I know and people told me about it and i checked it out and they're absolutely right but i i did not hear that song before so that's that's really a coincidence <laughs> i mean all the other influences like like uh, Pink, uh, Pink Floyd and, and Deep Purple, you know, Blackmore, Rainbow, uh, Queen, stuff like that, you know, they're obvious. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the, the, the muse thing, I, I heard it too. It was that one, uh, uh, that one melody. It's true, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was that wasn't definitely not deliberate. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Um, so, what was the real challenge of uh, making this album? The real challenge is um, the logistics of arranging all the musicians and the singers. Because, you know, they are all really busy. They all have got their own bands and you have to pester them. <laughs> you know, you have to like, please send me this. Can you send me that? Can you send me a photo? Can you please do this uh, little uh, behind the scenes thingy? Can you film yourself? And I hate that, you know. I, that's really the downside of doing an area on the just having to bother all the singers and being dependent on, on other people, you know, to, and, and waiting 
till they send you the files and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that that's that's the only thing. Apart from that, you know, the writing, the recording, and um, th that's that's a piece of cake. You know, I, I enjoy that. I mean, that's my life. Mm -hmm. That's it, it. Really, does sound like just a fun experience overall, just to do all this work. Like I know that you are a very busy man. You do this constantly, every single day. Like it's always in your schedule all the time. Absolutely, yeah. It's 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 yeah. It's all year. It's three hundred sixty-five days a year. I I don't. I have no weekends. I have no holidays. Just my evenings are holy. You know, my <laughs> evenings. I wanna. Yeah, I always keep them free. That's when I wanna watch some good, good TV series. You know, and have a nice meal with my girlfriend and doggy and you know. But yeah, the days are pretty much. Um, I I like to be busy. Mm -hmm. Busy is always good. This is always good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, <laughs> it is possible, you know. Because sometimes, you know, it is not possible because you have no inspiration. And, 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 you know, I call it my black hole period. And especially after an Aerial album, I work on that for a year. And it, and after that, you're empty, you know. And you want to go into a new project, but there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. So that's that's those are the hard times, really. Mm -hmm. um, so now I'm going to ask you... Uh, like other questions just other related things so sure. how was the theater equation experience from last year i know that uh last year you announced uh this theater production and it was a huge thing so how was it like to actually finally uh go on go on the stage and seeing the human equation live it, it was amazing to see the story come to life, you know, I, I, each night it was four nights and the world sold out and I was crying each night. <laughs> it was just so great seeing seeing all these musicians and all these singers, you know, to, performing my stuff and never saw that before, of course. And, and you see the whole story and, and uh, uh, but most of all, you know, the reactions of the people. I, of course, I was on stage looking into the audience or behind the stage and, and, and seeing people cry, seeing people smile, you know, and, and all the emotions. And uh, uh, that, that was really fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, actually, when I, I did see the live DVD at the end of the show, which I find, which was really awesome, you came out. Oh. You came out of the uh, like little cocoon thing, and uh, everybody freaked out like crazy because like you know yeah. <laughs> they they saw you and just like everybody's reaction was like amazing. That was fantastic. That was, I I had tears in my eyes, of course, you know. And if I every, every time I see it back, it's like I have these goosebumps. That was I, I was nervous as hell. It, it was stupid because I didn't have to do shit, you know. I just had to get out of that cocoon, <laughs> which was the dream sequence. I just had to step out and and wave, you know. But even for that, I was like, doom, doom, doom. my heart was like going like crazy, because I have horrible stage fright. You know, it's 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 terrible. Mm -hmm. But you know, it it, it was cool. It, to to, to uh, for the people and it was cool t to see the reaction of the people and and uh, yeah it, it was a fantastic moment really mm -hmm. I'm, I'm well i'm very glad that you had a really fun experience during the theater equation and i really hope soon that maybe it would go on broadway because that would be really really awesome because honestly if it goes on Broadway one time, I would definitely go see it because that that album is like one of the best Arion albums. That was like Thank you. that Thank was you. the that was the Arion album that I got into when I first got uh, listening to your music, and it would just be an amazing experience to see it live. Oh yeah, that would be a dream come true, of course, you know. But I think that there's so much, so many of these things going on there. You know, I think the chance is so small that they would pick it. But yeah, of course, that would be uh, that would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Also, this is a question that uh, my friend Colin. I bet I think you know him. Uh, if it, I think you do know him, um, he asked, uh, "Will there be any future albums such as a third Star One album?" Uh, it's it's definitely an option. Uh, like I said in the beginning, uh, I, I if I start a project, I never know what it's gonna be. You know, I, I just let it come to me. So, so it's it's yeah, it's it's an option, but I I can't plan it. Okay. So basically, yeah, that's my answer. Okay. Okay. So the last question is gonna be: So you are having the magical, spectacular show in September, which is Arion Universe. Um, what is it that we can expect from the show 
and what albums will be, be um see, what what albums will be being showcased at that show it will be a best of Arion, so we will play a minimum of two songs of each album uh, there will also be some Star One songs. Uh, there will be 16 singers there. Uh, there will be, of course, the band uh, and then classical musicians, cello, violin, flute, stuff like that. Um, there will be a big LED screen with, with cool visuals on it and and a lot of other surprises that, of course, I won't give away because <laughs> they're not surprises anymore. But yeah, we, we, we're working on this for two years and it's... Um, it, it's going to be very cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, are you guys, are you also going to be recording a Blu-ray and DVD for it? Absolutely, yes. Yes. It, it's three shows, and uh, yeah, definitely. And this one is going to be way better than the one of Theater Equation. Uh, I, I think that one, the camera work was awful with that one, you know. I mean, it didn't matter because the musicians were so great, but, but the camera work was... was and the editing was was awful. So this time we'll be uh, we're gonna make sure that we have a great team filming it and at least two nights, and um, yeah. So that's a promise. Mm -hmm. Also, um, for future singers, who do you, who do you, who would you have in mind to have on board with, with your projects? Well, uh, of course, it, it's always great to have singers from your formative years, you know, singers that were your heroes when you were growing up. And I better be fast because they're getting really old, <laughs> you know, but yeah, people like, like, like Robert Plant and, 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 and uh, David Gilmore and uh, people from way be before your time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, those, those heroes that I grew up listening to, uh, that would be a dream come true, you know, to be able to work with them. Mm -hmm. um, w would you ever consider uh, working with the younger um, progressive uh, or uh, like working with the younger um, younger singers that are out there like Spencer uh, Sotelo from Periphery uh, Rob Flynn from Machine Head by any chance well uh, of course yeah I'd love I, yeah definitely you know I, I always work with basically with with uh, Younger people and older people. I like to. I like it to be as varied as possible. You know, I like to have some unknown people on my albums, some young people, some people of the older generation. Uh, like on this album, I have like Tommy Rogers, you know, who's a young guy, and and Simone, of course, who's a, who's a young girl, and um, and the singers you mentioned, yeah, fantastic singers. You know, I mean, the list is endless. Really, it's it's like about a hundred, and there are new great singers surfacing every day, and uh, uh, that's a great thing about area on you know i can choose whoever i want i'm not restricted to just one or two singers mm -hmm. exactly exactly well Ar arjun thank you very much for for your time for this interview i'm very happy to talk to you today and it was just an honor a complete honor to talk to you cool phil well i enjoyed it too my thank pleasure you, thank you very much would you like to do a station id for our radio sure sure it's uh uh, say like you're listening to CJLO 1690 AM. Uh, CJLO 1690 AM. Like say like, hey, it's Ar Arjun. You're listening to CJLO yeah. 1690 AM. 60 or 16? 1690. 16, uh, 1690 AM. AM. Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Arjun Lucas from the Aerial Project, and you're listening. Oh shit! I have to write it down. It's <laughs> okay. It's okay. C J L O, right? Yes. Yeah. Hi, this is Arian Lukas from the Aaron Project, and you're listening to C J L O sixteen ninety AM. Thank you very much, Arjun. Cool, Phil. Alrighty, thank you very much for this interview. I am really honored, and I'm very, very happy. Great, man. Talk to you next time. Maybe for the DVD. Yeah, for sure. I will. Cool, Phil. Bye. 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 Bye.